Good morning. We are continuing our look at the Sermon on the Mount. We finished with the traditional section known as the Beatitudes, and now we're in verse 13. I'm going to read the whole verse, but we're going to take it really slow over the next few days and even uh, look kind of at one word at a time for a little bit. You'll see. Particularly what I want to focus on is the phrase, you are the salt of the earth. Verse 13, you are the salt of the earth, Jesus said. But if salt has lost its taste, how shall its saltiness be restored? It's no longer good for anything except to be thrown out and trampled under people's feet. Um, lots of the people that Jesus was speaking to uh, were law-abiding Jews. And as law-abiding Jews, they hear him speak, and they're supposed to be the ones who are uh, holding God's standard. And yet, with all the glommed on tradition, uh, seeing that as uh, by rote obedience, the road to righteousness, Jesus is letting them know that uh, they've kind of lost their way a bit. And he does it by this phrase, you are the salt of the earth, but if you've lost your saltiness, what good are you? Let's think about you are the salt of the earth. Kingdom people are the salt of the earth. You are the salt of the earth. So let's take the first word, you, you. Now in Greek, it's placed in what's called the emphatic position. In the Greek language, we don't have exclamation points where you can say something and uh, there's no uh, all caps on the text. There's no bold print, right? So no exclamation points. So in Greek, it's word order that uh, draws up emphasis. And so the emphasis here in the phrase, you are the salt of the earth, is on you. You. You, you are... And this is important to note. In, in a sense, you have to see yourself as the clutch performer. I don't mean to say that God's kingdom rises and falls on you, because it doesn't. God can accomplish his will with or without you, and yet he has orchestrated his will such that he wants you to be a part of it, and he's called you to it. So you do have a key role. You have to be prepared to be the salt of the earth. Not your neighbor, not the other person sitting next to you at church, not somebody down the road, not the person who's more gifted, not the pastor talking to you on the video. You are the salt of the earth. So all I want you to think about today is, are you fulfilling your role in being the salt of the earth? What we mean by salt of the earth is going to come clearer in the next few days as we do these thoughts for the day. But right now, this is just about personal responsibility. Wherever you are in your life, you are the salt of the earth. You. So take responsibility for how you function in the world around you for the glory of God. Take care.